So it is fantastic that we open this year with an Australian film. And right here I have Richard Gray, the director of this film. Congratulations, Richard. It's his first film. And what an incredible way to start. And then, of course, the star of the film, I won't say anything more until you've seen it, Alex Dimitriadis, who um, <laughs> broke the flow home today to talk about the film and to welcome you all and to try and make this a really special launch of our film season. I don't have much more to say, except we really value your support and I really hope you enjoy this season. It's a cracker season. Sherry Hopkins can't be here tonight, the programmer of the film season, but those of you who know her and have followed her work over the years will know that this is a very special film season for her and I hope you enjoy much of it. But for now, I'd like to introduce you to our guests. Uh, thank you very much, Sheila. Uh, yeah, those points are well made about the Australian films. I hope in future we not just get Australian films up here, but West Australian films. The industry is booming here at the moment, so perhaps in the next couple of years we'll see a uh, West Australian film opening the festival. Now, Richard, um, I think if uh, luck had gone another way, this film may have been made about five or six years ago, I guess. Um, so, uh, could you tell us a story about how you nearly made this film five or six years ago, and, uh, and the story of how it came to be made? Thanks, Mark. Firstly, I've got to say, this is an awesome place to screen your film. <laughs> this is just fantastic. <laughs> We've been right around Australia and this tops it. This is awesome. So th thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Um, I, I entered the screenplay that I wrote. Uh, I went to the Victorian College of the Arts Film School and I entered the uh, screenplay for Summer Coda in a competition called Project Greenline uh, back in 2005. And we were runner up in that. Um, and there were something like 1,200 screenplays uh, in that. Um, but the second prize didn't, didn't get anything. <laughs> but it did allow us to get the script to a few important people and our executive producers and, and start, you know, it gave us that little stamp of credibility. Um, and then it was just a long road of five, six years of trying to find the money. And we were very lucky enough um, to be able to get the script to people like Alex and um, Rachel Taylor and Susie Porter and Jackie Weaver and these type of people. And when you have people like that want to do the script, it, um, it helps when you're trying to raise money. Uh, Richard, was the film always conceived of having a Greek Australian leading man, or did once you got Alex on board, did you reorient the screenplay to, to suit your actor? Um, and no, and it's an it's interesting point because uh, I um, really loved Alex's work in um, in his earlier films and TV stuff, and 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 just really wanted to see him in a romantic lead. And um, I just wanted to play, hear him to play Australian, um, which I think we, we don't get enough of, you know. Um, um, and so I just wanted him to play romantically. Now, Alex, you're mainly known for your kind of urban characters. I can't even imagine you uh, in the bush <laughs> as a character. You're always a kind of a, a crime figure, a, a cop. A, a, you know, in, in, um, in Head On, you're very much a Melbourne character. Was it difficult uh, to adjust yourself to be playing a, a, a character grown up in the bush? Um, I actually grew up on a farm, so... <laughs> <laughs> there goes that theory out the window. Um, I didn't actually grow up on a farm, but uh, my uncle uh, you know, had a property uh, and with you know, horses and various other animals, etc. We spent a lot of time there. Um, but as far as uh, you know, orange farming goes, you know, there was a lot to learn. and. Um, you know, just about the, the, the business in general um, and more specifically operating tractors and that sort of thing and, you know, just knowing about citrus in, in general. But, um, you know, it was a lot of fun learning all that stuff and uh, I guess this is one of the luxuries, uh, one of the interesting parts of, of this, this job, this, you know, silly business that takes us all um, to all parts and uh, to places that you would never go before, learning things that you would never even, you know, bother with. But, uh, yeah, it was fun. Now, Richard said that uh, you, uh, he wanted to put you into a romantic uh, a leading role, and it just occurred to me you really haven't done much romance, have you, since the, your debut in, in The Heartbreak Kid? Is that, is that right? And were you anxious to play that kind of role? Um, yeah, once again, I mean, that, that's kind of how I started my career, but I was, you know, a kid back then, so returning into that, that seat of, you know, a romantic lead, but without all the sort of wishy-washy kind of pin-up sort of style, um, 
stuff that comes with that territory when when you're doing that, playing that kind of role as a as a teenager. Um, this was now you know my chance to do it as as an adult, um, and I guess in a role that had you know a few more sort of um, complex layers to it and a little more subtlety to it. So yeah, it, it felt good returning, but kind of doing it right this time, I guess. Now the, the film's a perfect opener for the festival because it's, it's just such a, a beautifully photographed film and in a beautiful part of the world in Mildura, in Australia's uh, a fruit growing region. And just sitting here watching it last night, I was thinking, what a, what a wonderful place for a holiday. I'd love to go and spend some time there. But you guys have been telling a story that it was actually quite nightmarish to, to shoot the film. So the deception that you were able to pull off was that this is a, a kind of an, a, an oasis, and yet it sounded like a bit of a hellhole. <laughs> I wouldn't say hellhole, um, but I would say it was hot as a firecracker. It was really hot, um, but I, Alex and I both adore Muldura, and I've been going there for years, and we're very lucky to have friends with the, the, the chef Stefano uh, Di Perry and uh, the Muldura Brewery, uh, which played an important part in keeping our crew um, on set. And, um, and whenever we would work overtime, because we made Summer Coda, it was a very independent film, um, there would be slabs of Muldura beer uh, for our crew, and it was hot. Muldura is a beautiful, beautiful place, but it was regularly in the mid 40s. And um, in the car that Alex had to drive around, it was it would get up to the mid 50s, um, and that made it hard. But we had such an amazing crew, um, and our production designer um, from Western Australia, and our art director from Western Australia, both here tonight from Perth. Emma Fletcher and, uh, and Lou Brady, um, just beautiful, beautiful girls. And everything you see on the screen tonight um, is their work. And um, they drove their little production van, which they call the Cherry, which is a little old mail van um, from Perth to Muldura. They drove, they drove to set. Um, <laughs> not every morning. <laughs> but they drove to set and they're just fantastic and the cinematography first time cinematographer and I think that's why it took us six years to fund the film because it's my first film and it's a cinematographer's first film it's a producer's first film and um, so it's just really special to be to be here tonight <laughs>